Good morning, everybody. Well, it's morning here. Good day. Good evening. Um, welcome to my Shabby Craft Studio. Thank you for being here. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, today, we are going to jump right in because I've been wanting to make this video for a week. And I tried making it last week. And my husband called. And then my son called. <laughs> and I gave up. Because even though I have notifications off, I had to keep turning the video off to answer their phone calls to see what was wrong. Because, you know, guys, you know, if they call, there's something usually going on. So, anywho's, um, one of my subbies asked me to show how I make the Franken paper to make the tags out of. So, I did a couple. Um, I did one one evening to sort of pull it together and make sure <laughs> I remembered how. And then I made the other one during the video and so I had to delete the video because it, it just was all over the place, which is pretty normal for me, but you know, it's not fair to you guys. And then um, I made another one and I can't remember why I made this, I think because I was gonna make a fold over tag kind of thing. So we'll we'll play with that. So these are all napkins. These are all Christmas napkins that I have. Um, I, I've been going napkin slap happy lately. E yeah, like I said in my other video. Because, um, <laughs> I don't know, I'm just having so much fun with decoupage. Now these I simply glued on. Uh, I think one of these, and I couldn't tell you which one because I can't tell the difference. And I can't remember. <laughs> no surprise there. Um, I used the Liquitex Matte Gel Matte Medium um, to glue it down. And the other one I used a glue stick, just uh, Uhu or Scotch glue stick. I really do like my Scotch glue sticks. They're more expensive. I buy them in Staples, but um, it, they do hold a lot. It does say, apply at least two strokes, bond items quickly, non-toxic. And on the cardboard container it comes in, it says it will um, hold fabric. And I do really like it. And it's a big glue stick for three something. I've been using the Uhu because I ordered like the bulk package of them, which this one feels like it's almost empty. So we'll play around with that. Um, if you don't have any of that, you can use glue. Uh, just white glue, I think. Now, I don't use that, so I'm not going to profess to know that it works great. Um, and then we're going to cut these up, and I'm going to show you how I make tags or pockets out of these. Um, this one, uh, any of them, you could also make pockets out of. I usually do tags in this orientation, because then I cut it in half this way, and then I cut it into thirds. And I get some really nice size tags out of it that way. So we're going to play around. Um, I have, let's see, I have regular, like, sort of heavyweight cardstock. And then I have some lighter cream colored, heavier paper more than cardstock here. I'm going to use the heavier cardstock because... If I'm making tags and pockets, that's what I want it to consist of. If I am going to um, make a journaling card, I might use the lighter cardstock and then back it with some tea stain paper or whatever. And that would make it more sturdy for a journaling card. Or you can just use the regular cream colored cardstock for that too. Um, and just ink the back. Or you can still put tea stain paper on it. The only thing with this is it will make it a little heavier and bulkier, but that's okay. It, I mean, you know, I don't know if you're going to use a bunch of them. So, um, I have, <laughs> uh, let me separate a few things out here because I went a little nuts with buying more napkins too. And, okay, so let me show you what I have here. Yep. A little, a little napkin slap happy. <laughs> like I said, I've gone a little crazy here. 
Um, so I have these napkins, and what I wanted to explain to you is you can get some really beautiful Christmas napkins, and they have one, one image on them, or maybe two. Those are great, but they limit you a lot. What I'm looking for is, when I'm looking for napkins, I want lots of images on it. So, um, let me pull one out. So this one is this napkin, obviously. And I'm going to put all these aside. We'll get to those. We'll get to those. And I can't profess to be on top of my game today because... It's been a long time since I did a video. My last one was a, a Happy Mail, so, uh, you know, actually working on video, I haven't done it in a couple weeks, and you kind of lose the rhythm when you don't do it for a while. Okay, so when I'm picking a napkin, and I, I absolutely fell in love with this one because it has this little, like, postage stamp on it, not to mention the snowman, but when I'm looking for a napkin with images to use, I sort of learn to isolate the image so I love that image I hope this is showing up and what I'm doing is sort of making a frame with my fingers I love the snowman this image here is really pretty I love the the red birds there they don't look like cardinals but they're red I love that it has words on it right here um, I love this because it's got the written background with the word birds behind it um, this one is the postage stamp with the like a cancellation stamp on there. And so I'm looking for the different images. I also bought different size napkins, as you see. These are the small like cocktail napkins. These are like um, guest napkins, they call them. You can even put these in your bathroom for people to wipe their hands on if you want, I guess. These are the beverage napkins this size. So, and these are called uh, lunch napkins. Who knew? Who knew all the napkins had different names, right? So another example is, I don't think, I think I have this one. I have a few pulled out of the packages, so I'm just trying to use those. So if you look at this, look at this strip. How nice would these strips be? So if you kind of isolate, let's turn it this way, isolate that strip or those two together or these three together or just that one, great borders, right? Great borders. Um, and then these images, even though it looks repetitive, they're all a little different. So if you want to just take the trees, if you want to take the tree and the single deer, if you want to take the deer eating under the trees, there's a little Christmas tree. There's two deer, a buck and a doe, looks like. I don't know. Maybe that's a small buck. So, because I know nothing about deer. So, there's that one. And then, let me see if I have... Okay, so here's the Christmas tree one, which I've already started tearing apart. This one has some pretty words on it. It has um, festive wishes, peace, love, uh, different things. Then it has this little snowflake symbol. It has the holly and the bow and the berries. And then a really pretty Christmas tree, right? And so this is just an example of what to look for when you go out looking for the napkins, this one has a lot of plain space on it. And I don't know if this shows up on camera, but it's got some writing here, some words. Um, this is from, oh, this is Oh Christmas Tree, the song. And then it's got a very faint, pretty design here. And I'm going to hold this up to the camera, but I end up losing my light if I get too high. But I don't know if you can see that very faint design great background great great background so you can tear this right here and use that as a background and set other images on top of it this wreath with the joy in between um this wreath with noel on it and then of course the christmas trees so you can do this with any napkin any napkin 
It does not have to be Christmas. The subby asked me to do Christmas. I don't do a Christmas journal. I don't do a daily, uh, a December daily. Um, I only started this journey a year ago. And the first December dailies I saw were from Gail from last year. So um, I have not done those. And to be honest, I don't even know what I'm going to do with these tags. I may use them as um, name tags for Christmas gifts or something. Or I may put them in the shop because I, I don't know what else to do with them. <laughs> because I'm not really planning on making a Christmas journal. So for example, um, for other other napkins that you would look for to not make Christmas, because this isn't about Christmas, this is only because someone asked me to do Christmas tags. I went and found these and I absolutely fell in love with all of them. And, you know, butterflies, <laughs> purple. <laughs> and these, I just, I just fell in love with them. So what I did was I started tearing all of these out and I have not done a um, Franken paper with them yet, but I started tearing all of these out and you do the same thing with these type of napkins. Just tear them out. I do a lot of botanical and nature themed journals. That's my favorite thing to do. So these napkins, when I started tearing them out, so much potential, so much. I will probably be making a ton of ephemera with these napkins on them. Paper bags, glassine bags, uh, pockets, tuck spots, all kinds of things. So that being said, let's get on with the show. So I just shoved everything to the side and have no idea what I did with it. There it is. I need paper. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the orientation to make the tags. Oop, put that aside because that's not Christmas. <laughs> and um, if you all don't know how to take the paper off of the back of the napkin, there are several ways. You can take the scotch tape, stick the scotch tape to the first layer and then the second layer, if there are three layers, and rip that off. The other thing I tend to do if they come off easily is I just use the side of my thumb to smooth out the embossing here. And basically the layers of napkin lift up. Not on all the napkins, trust me. There are napkins that I cannot get to separate this way. In fact, there are napkins that I have a problem even um, separating with tape. And this one's going to make a liar out of me. Because <laughs> I've taken all the other ones like this apart. And I've been saving my white bits of the backs of the napkins. And when I'm stamping... I use them to stamp off on. Instead of using a stamp paper, I use uh, the white napkins. And then I can tear these out and I can use those on journaling cards and stuff like that too. Or even the really faint ones, I use them as backgrounds on collage and then do that. So that's a, another whole video. Um, let me see if I can get the back off of this. Please come off. Don't make a liar out of me. Okay. Well, we are going to use the scotch tape. I just have to find the scotch tape first. I think I have to crawl behind you. I'm still here. I'm just behind you. Okay. Um, so, scotch tape method. There we go. You just... In some napkins, when I start tearing this this layer that's next to the napkin you want to use, I've had napkins rip because these two layers are so stuck together. There we go. And then I'm going to stick this by the edge of my desk. So we are going to just do some tearing out. I have a few. Oh, my. I have a few in my bin that I've torn, but not as many as I did the flowers. And I should have pre-torn before I started this video. But, you know, this way you'll see how I select what I want to tear. So I'm going to take the little napkin label off here. These are the Michael napkins. I'm just tearing that off because I don't really need that. <laughs> and then I'm going to start, let me see if I can do this on screen. I tend to do everything up close to me because I can see better that way. 
You can do this on cardstock. You can do this on tea or coffee stained paper. You can do this on um, envelopes. Just about anything you want to do this on, you can do it on. And you can use, like I said, glue stick works really well. You can use um, wet glue. Although, if I were going to use wet glue, I would try and use very thick, a thicker glue. And wet glue is going to make, hmm, maybe we'll just do this. Wet glue is, there I go lifting it out of camera range again. Wet glue is going to um, be a little more difficult. The other thing I like about the uh, glue stick is that it dries fairly quickly. And I do let my cardstock dry overnight. Um, well, any of my collage. I let it dry overnight. I try not to cut into it right away. And then I do have to sometimes go back and glue edges down or whatever. Because once you cut it apart, you know, sometimes it the bits haven't glued down tightly. I haven't used enough glue yet. I'm not a really good glue stick user like Gail and Rachel. They all are like expert glue stickers. <laughs> Me, not so much. I I'm just not that good at it, but I'm getting there. Practice makes perfect, right? So I hope this finds everybody doing well. I um, have been really really, really busy. A lot of stuff going on here. Um, oops. Had a doctor's appointment Monday for my eyes. I'm getting my cataract surgery next Monday, and I am so anxious. I have talked to lots of people that have had it done, and they are so happy afterwards, but I'm struggling. I'm you know, I have to worry just a teensy bit because, I mean, I do this and, you know, our eyes are important to us, aren't they? And it's a little scary to have to know somebody's cutting into your eye and replacing the lens. But I'm tired of having to have six lights on every time I work. You should see my sewing machine. <laughs> Oh, yeah. When I sew, I have the sewing machine light, which is very inadequate, at least for me. And I have a desk light, like an, an Ot light, but it's a different brand. Um, I got them at Aldi, and they're called Easy Home. Actually, the one by my the one by my sewing machine, I think, is an Ot light, now that I come to think of it. Um, and then I, I finally broke down and bought this strip of LED lights that you're supposed to stick up underneath, um, the sewing machine, the, the part that goes around. Um, but I didn't do that. What I did is I wrapped it around and I have the lights facing the needle. So I, I have done that. <laughs> And it's still not enough light. When I'm sewing those darn um, ephemera folios, uh, it's a struggle. Let me tell you, the struggle is very, very real. So, yeah, there's that. Okay, I have these. What am I missing? I'm missing this. So I'm going to tear some of this out. And as you can see, I'm just, I'm just tearing out bits and pieces and I can tear them down further later on if I want just a partial, you know, piece of it or something smaller, but I'm sort of isolating the different pieces here. And we're going to do this. And if you want to fast forward this, you know, put me... Hit the, hit the three dots in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, 
and you can do playback speed and you can zip right through all of this. <laughs> you don't have to listen to me babble and you don't have to watch me tearing napkins. And I really do apologize. I should have planned on this ahead of time. But like I said, Monday I had a eye doctor appointment to measure for the lenses that I'm getting. And if any of you um, have had the cataract surgery, let me know in the comments what lens you ended up going with. The choices I had were a multifocal lens and the torque distance lens. And the doctor told me, my eye doctor, told me that with all of the close-up work that I do, I probably would not be happy with the multifocal lenses. Now, I've been wearing glasses since I was 10 years old, which means that's 53, 53 years that I've been wearing glasses. All I want to do is not have to wear glasses anymore. Uh, I'm so tired of wearing glasses. They're a pain. They're expensive. I wear trifocals because, you know, I do computer work and I do this work and I sew and I watch TV and I drive and I do all that other stuff. So I needed the mid-range, oh, probably 15, 20 years ago. Oh, it had to be more than that. Probably more like 20 years ago I needed the mid-range when I was still working for the government. And, um... Yeah, when I couldn't see the computer screen clearly anymore, they gave me a second pair of glasses. So I wore bifocals the rest of the time. And when I was on the computer, I had to put a separate pair of glasses on. Hated it. Tried the uh, progressive lenses. Hated it. I, I don't, My eyes don't adjust well. So, yeah. And everybody that has had the, the cataract surgery says... They wish they had done it sooner because colors are brighter, things are clearer, you're not walking around in a fog all the time. So I can hardly wait <laughs> because I'm a little tired of needing 16 lights and everything being a big fog to me. All right, so um, I'm reaching over to my cart. And what I do is... I can wipe glue very easily off of this craft mat, but then every time I do that, I have to stop and wipe off the, the mat because everything wants to stick to it. So, portrait orientation. I hope I didn't just kick the camera. The, the tripod stand is right next to my leg. I have tried two other those arms. I, I bought an articulating arm on Amazon and I'm sending that back because the iPad, the, the uh, there's a little bracket that holds the thing that holds the iPad and it kept falling out of that bracket. The, the thing kept falling off of the arm. The bracket kept my iPad kept falling. That's what it boils down to. Not happy. <laughs> Don't want the iPad falling. No, no, no. And I bought one of those white bendy arms, but it's not very long. And so I need something for this corner over here. So I'm going to tear this. I'm tearing this. this sort of straight edged background kind of paper out. Napkin. I guess it's paper. And you can also use tissue paper. I meant to pull out, I have some tissue paper that is from last year from Hobby Lobby and it's Christmas themed with music on it. And I'm going to have to find some of that because I wanted to use some of that on this one. Uh, I do try to get it down smoothly, but if it has wrinkles, I don't go nuts. You know, texture. It's texture. It's a design element. 
That's what we call it. So I just, I just kind of go to town. It's like a puzzle. You got to find things that fit in the right area. And you want to overlap a little bit. Oops. And you want it to stick down. I did, um, oops. <laughs> I'm oopsing a lot today, aren't I? And you may not all agree with where I put my stuff, but you know, that's okay. You'll see it come together when you cut them into tags. And then the other thing is when you cut it into tags, you can um, put a focal point, focal, uh oh, that's the end of my glue stick. Put a, another object on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to have a time with this glue stick today. Watch. <sighs> so what I was saying is <laughs> it's stuck to my napkins. This thing's a mess. We're throwing this in the garbage. Goodbye out the scotch because that's the one I've got handy alrighty all right so what was I saying um if you don't like the tag by itself you can tear something else out anything you want something from a digi kit something from the napkins um whatever you want do your own thing you know experiment see how you like what you're doing and make a focal point out of it. If, I mean, this is very, <laughs> in case you hadn't noticed, very colorful. Get off me, please. And you can overlap here. And I don't know if I'm going to do this whole sheet. I mean, I think you guys get the point. Um, I think, let's see, I was going to tell you something. I can't remember if I already said this because like I said, I did try this video last week. I did use a very light coat of the gel, the matte gel, the Liquitex matte gel over the top of the ones I already made. And... I am sticking. Ah. There we go. Very nice. I like it. Um, I didn't want to put a lot over it because I'm not sure if I'm going to put something else on top of that. Oh, I do have some news for you. If you've been watching me and you've watched my last few videos that I did make, you will know that I had moved my craft room to the basement because I, I was feeling overwhelmed up here. I was feeling overwhelmed in the sunroom, which is where I had been working for probably, ow, probably the last nine months I've been working in the sunroom. Um, since doing journaling and we we don't entertain a lot we don't have a lot of company so really I mean and we weren't my husband wasn't using the sunroom I would sit out here occasionally this is before I before I started doing journaling before I started working um, in the sunroom on journals and stuff so um, I really love it out here. I love all the windows. I do a lot better when there is a lot of daylight around me. You know, I get that SAD, the SAD, Seasonal Effectiveness Disorder. And I have other sometimes issues with, um, with eh, being depressed sometimes. And 
not being real happy with the way things are going. I am sticking to this thing left and right. So, um, this is this is literally when people say they're in their happy place. This literally keeps me going mentally to be able to do this stuff on a daily basis and to be able to um, be in the the brightness, the daylight, etc. of where I am in the sunroom. And so, I'm sorry, I can't think. <laughs> it's an issue. I can't think about where I want stuff and talk at the same time. Um, so I moved to the basement because of space issues, but between me and little Gabby girl, the, the little white snoring puppy, who is not snoring right now. She's sound asleep over there, but not snoring. She's breathing though, barely. But, but, um, oh, now she's starting to snore. Between she and I, we both have bad knees. And we were both gimping around here so badly from going up and down the stairs a lot that I told my husband I needed to move again. Poor guy. It's a lot of work to move my stuff. I have a lot of stuff. So, we moved everything back upstairs and we moved it into the front bedroom which is just a guest bedroom there was an extra bed in there we took the bed out moved it to the bedroom across the hall and we okay I need I need a snowman in here somewhere so more glue Martha so we moved everything into the front bedroom and there was an Ikea dresser, so we took everything out of the Ikea dresser, and I stored a lot of my stuff in there. And you wouldn't believe how a dresser with six drawers made such a huge difference. I could put my fabrics in there. I had, when, when before we moved me to the basement, um, I had stuff all over the floor of this sunroom and I was tripping over everything and it was not a good thing. I, and I can't work like that. Um, I don't do well like that at all. So I was pretty frustrated and getting more frustrated up here. Moved me to the basement, had trouble walking around. Um, oh, now she's snoring. <laughs> Can you hear her? That's her. That's my little white fluffy dog. So, move to the bedroom. Well, that front bedroom, it's like a dungeon. It is so dark there that I was getting, oh, I am stuck to my napkin, that I was, I was not happy. I just was not happy. Sadly, I told my husband I wanted the sunroom back. <laughs> you, you should have seen his face. <laughs> yep. He said, whatever you want, I just want you to be happy. Meanwhile, inside he was probably like, oh my God, this woman is going to kill me. Which he's probably right. One of these days, all this moving and... If I don't drive him to the nutty house, I'll, I'll probably kill him with all the moving and everything. But anyway, bless his heart. He said, okay. And it was like uh, mid-afternoon when I told him this. Well, don't you know, he said, okay, as soon as we eat dinner, we're moving everything. And I'm like, really? On a full stomach, you want me to move all of the stuff? He did most of it, I have to admit. But we we moved everything back into the sunroom, including the dressers too tall I don't know I call them dressers I know there's dressers chest of drawers you know all that kind of stuff and so they're tall dressers one is narrow and one is wide but they're both tall 
they're probably close to five feet tall and I'm five foot two. So, you know, it, it just works for me. And I have all my fabrics and stuff in there. So I'm starting to do more with fabrics and I'm really, really enjoying being back in my sunroom. Okay. I am going to look for, this is the tissue paper. No, it's not. That's not the tissue paper. Where's my Christmas tissue paper? It's got music on it. Is this it? This is it. I found it! I bought like um, probably 10 packages of this because it was always 50% off. And it only cost a few dollars anyway. So I think I was getting it for like $1.50. This is what it looks like. I hope you can see that. Now, I haven't looked this year to see if they have it yet, um, this year again. But, let's see. Put it right there. When I use it during the year for other collage, I just cut out the words that say Christmas on it. <laughs> or Carol, or, you know, anything Christmas related. I just cut that out, and I use the music part, and I absolutely love using it. So, it, it's a good, it was a good find. All right, I'm just going to slather that thing with glue. <laughs> All right, we are going to finish this up, and then we are going to go to the ones that are dry, and we are going to cut them. And we will, we will move on with this after I get a couple of more things on here. I just want to get this one finished so you can see it. And you can see I'm not being overly um crazy about where I'm putting stuff I'm just sort of you know moving it around if something gets cut in half if this snowman cut, gets cut in half so be it you, you just you can put another focal point on the card after you're done you know what I mean like don't overthink it don't stress it so let's see that will go right there I still have wet glue on here. <laughs> Trust me, I'm sticking to it. I know it's wet. Um, a little bit of music here. Glue under here. There we go. And if you have stuff hanging over the edge, that's okay. You can trim it off after. If you don't quite meet the edge, that's okay. You can always put Distress Ink on it. Red or green or gold or brown or whatever you want on it, right? Okay, so I have this couple little tiny, tiny spaces. Let me see what I've got. I've got this. So I'm going to put this right here. Come on. All right. I'm going to call that good. Okay? So I'm going to let this dry. And I usually let it dry several hours to overnight, depending on what time of day I've done it. And see, I have bits overhanging. But you just have to let it, let it dry. And then you can cut those off. And even them out. Hello. Okay, this is going to be pieced together, this video, because um, my doctor's office just called. <laughs> and of course, I had to stop and answer the phone because, you know, the doctor's office calls, you answer, right? Everything's fine. Just blood test results from a visit I had a couple weeks ago. So there you go. I can't get through a video without being interrupted, obviously. So. I will piece this video together and we will move on. Okay. I'm going to put all these bits and bobs in my in my tray. And I am so this is the piece we finished. And I'm searching for the other pieces. Okay. That I showed you at the beginning. And here we go. Alrighty. So what I do, and I've only done this a couple of times myself, 
So, oops. What I do is, this is all nice and dry. It's been dry for well over a week. Okay. I did do some stamping on it. Um, I think with this one, I am going to do some um, gesso on it. And we will play with that. And then on the other one, I will show you um because I can't help myself I, I I just feel like this one needs gesso um and on the other one I'll show you how we'll cut it and once they're cut you can do whatever you want with them you can play with them some more you can you can um use them as Christmas tags. You can use them as tags in a journal. You can use them however you want. It's your stuff. Go nuts. My paintbrush. My paintbrush is falling apart. The paint on the handle of my paintbrush is coming off. Now, this looks really white, but you know, I love snow. I, I love snow. I don't live somewhere that it snows a lot, and when it does, they don't know how to handle it here. We're in Virginia. And uh, I grew up in upstate New York. Well, okay. I learned a, a while back that I'm not from upstate. Upstate is a whole different section of New York. I grew up in Rochester, New York. So we grew up with lake effect snows and, you know, snow mounds that were 20 feet high after they plowed. And it was like that all winter. Here we get snow in January and February, maybe some years. Um... But when it snows, the people around here just don't know what to do with it. They're just, it's just, it's just a mess. Maine, my parents were from Maine. And they know how to handle it up in New England. They know how to handle it up north, out west, Minnesota, Chicago, Illinois, you know, all those places. There. I just like the effect that has. And when this dries, it's going to dry lighter than this. And if I wanted to stamp on top of that, layer on top of that, I could. So we're going to put this aside. And put that aside. And let this dry. And then we're going to take these two, which I've not gessoed, and we're going to cut these. So let me get my cutter out. Um, all right. So this is an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. Whatever size piece of paper you have where you live, just figure it out. I do believe, I, I have a, because <laughs> I can't remember anything. Sorry, I have to reach in front of you. I have this little book, which, you know, being a person that likes to decorate, I should really decorate it. But what I did was I wrote down um, cutting tags from cardstock. So it's 11 inches by eight and a half inches. So I do it approximately two and three quarter inches. And I cut it in half this way. So half of 11 is five and a half. So I cut it five and a half this way. And that's only if you want six tags out of it. If you want to make smaller tags, go for it. If you want to make pockets, you can do that. Okay. So I cut that in half. So two and three quarters would be, right? Oh, math is so not my strong point. Half, three quarters. Okay, so there's a tag, and what I do is I take my little my little AARP card because <laughs> I have not joined AARP, <laughs> and I I put it up to the corner. I take my scissors, a scissor scissor, and I line it up, I cut that corner, and I flip the tag over, and. Try to get my edges together and I cut that corner and I take my hole punch and I punch me a hole. You can use your copper dial to punch a hole. I just happen to have a handheld punch that is the right size. And there's your tag. 
And if you want to put something else on this, say you're working with a digi kit with all these colors in it, which I don't have one printed off because I don't do, I mean, I do Christmas. I just haven't done a Christmas journal. Um, you could you could glue on a focal point on this card, ink up the back, and you could ink it in any color you want. I am trying to grab out my, there's my brush. Oops, get in there. <laughs> Not cooperating. I just ink it up because I did not tea dye any of my cardstock. My husband's been doing a great job of tea dyeing, I have to say. I have no idea how long my first video was. So I have no how no idea how long to do this video. There. Now you have a distress tag. Okay? Awesome. You can put a um, hole reinforcer around here if you want. You can, you know, use Christmas ribbon, you can use Christmas yarn, uh, gold would look really pretty with this, anything would, red, green. There you go. So there's your tags. Um, if you want to make a fold over tag, so what I do is I put, I used landscape orientation, I glued the napkins on halfway up, I put a fold in there, then I flipped it over, put the napkins on that way. So if I want to split this, this is 11. So let's see, four, eight, 12. So four inches would be too wide, three, six, nine would be too narrow. So somewhere between three and four inches. <laughs> Math, not my strong suit. Okay, so I'm gonna do like, Three and a half, three and a half is seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That'd give me a four inch tag. So I'm gonna do about I'm gonna do about three and three quarters. Okay. I don't know what we'll get. So there, now you have a fold over tag. You could clip these corners. I don't have a journal. <laughs> I sold my journal yesterday. I don't have a journal to show you. Um but if you had oh my lord. Oh my Lanta. I am not prepared. Okay, say this is a journal page. You could put this over the top of it, right? And and I would work it a little so it's not curling up. And if you want to take that, oop, Martha, take that, flip it over. You've watched Gail do this a million times, and probably a lot of other people too. Do that, and then put that there, and then you could take like a gold paper clip and put that on your page. Isn't that pretty? And then that could be a journaling spot. Ugh. Right? Beautiful journaling spot. So you can do that, or you can um, you could cut it here and make a pocket or a tuck spot or even a corner. Let's, let's, I'm going to cut this in half. And then you could make, this is, I don't know how long this is now. This could be a tuck spot. You could glue it here and here and have a tuck spot down here. You could make this a journaling card and tuck it into a pocket. Or you could make this a pocket and tuck this in. Just like that. Glue this down on three edges. Glue this down on, <laughs> on three edges right here, right? And stick this in as a journaling card. 
So there's a lot of stuff you can do with these. I mean, there's even more. There, there's more ideas. It's just really fun to use the the um, the napkins or tissue paper and do your collage, do a Franken paper, and then you know make it into whatever you want. You could take this and cut it this way and have a corner tuck right there. So, you know, have fun with it. Do what you want. Have fun. But use your stuff. Go find some napkins. Most of those napkins, well, all of my napkins, I found in um, Tuesday morning. All of the Christmas ones I found in Tuesday morning. But there's lots of places to find napkins. So just go have some fun with it. And, you know. Huh. And so these may, like I said, end up in my shop. Or they just may end up as uh, gift tags for my family. For my family's gifts. So thank you for joining me. I love you all. If anybody has another suggestion of what you'd like to see me do, let me know. I am working furiously to get some more ephemera folios done. I am behind. I am having eye surgery on Monday, which is November 4th. I should be able to be back to work um, on this stuff by the 5th, but... I have <laughs> I have to go back to the eye doctor the morning of the 5th, have my eye checked. Then I have to go back to the eye doctor on Thursday because normally I would go a week later, but he's going out of town. Um, so he's going to be gone that week. And then after he comes back on the 18th, I get my second eye done, my left eye done, the other eye, my second eye, the other eye done, which is my left eye. And so for two weeks, I have to walk around with one eye focused on distance and the other eye blurry, or I have to put my glasses on, which is going to totally throw off the eye that I just had corrected. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. But if you guys have experience with, you know, cataract surgery, leave comments below so that it can give me a little encouragement. <laughs> tell, tell me how great it is and, you know, what lens you went with. Um, for me, it's too late to change my mind now, whether I get the multifocal or not. The doctor told me I wouldn't like the multifocal because working up close like I do, um, it causes a lot of blurry lines. I don't know. I, I don't know if he's right or not. I don't know if I should have gone with multifocal, but I'm going with the distance and then I'll have to wear readers, which I'm not looking forward to because taking glasses on and off is just going to drive me bonkers. Because I do so much close-up work and then, you know, I get up and I do distant stuff and then I'm looking at my iPad and my phone and my computer and it's probably going to make me nuts. But anyway, I just want to see clearly again and that's what's important. So, like I said, if you want to leave me comments below, <laughs> please do. Love you all. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you to my new subscribers and old subscribers. Thank you to those that have ordered from my Etsy shop, which is a little tiny bit empty right now, but I'm working on getting it fuller. Um, I had some ruffles in there. I'm going to make some more ruffles and we'll have those in the shop. Uh, I have some fabric strips that are really fun to play with. And so if you want to take a look at that, um, shipping was killing me. I actually lost money on my first order of uh, ruffles because I thought it was only going to cost like a buck fifty to mail and it cost me almost four dollars to mail a ruffle a set of ruffles five ruffles to somebody I was so upset and disappointed so the shipping has gone up I don't believe in the free shipping thing through Etsy because I think it's a ripoff for the customer so um yeah and if you're interested in anything and you're not in the U.S. which is where I sell right now um, let me know and we can work something out. Love you guys. Happy crafting. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it greatly.